Thanks, Al, for talking to us today. I know there are a lot of people out there who are, who are concerned about what they're hearing that's going on in DOC. Is it true that we can't meet the conservation challenges New Zealand is facing? Yes, it's absolutely true. We've never been able to meet the conservation challenge that we're facing either since DOC was established in 1987 or before it. Uh, but we've done a whole lot of things to uh, attempt to do that. So we've built an army of volunteers, fabulous people who just get out there and do stuff because they're so committed. And often, you know, we've got things that we want volunteers to do and we've got more people offering than we can accommodate. Uh, we've got the community groups out there who are really doing projects. Forest and Bird, who long before DOC was around and who were formative in, in DOC's establishment, uh, doing fantastic work. And then a lot of smaller community groups uh, who were worried about their neighbourhood and restoring it, whether it's a wetland or forest or whatever it is. Uh, we've had a lot of long-standing uh, sponsorships, uh, some really key national ones, the Bank of New Zealand for Kiwi, the Aluminium Smelter for Kākāpō, uh, that Mitre 10 uh, for Takahei, and then a whole lot of smaller groups uh, in communities that have contributed. And, and, and last but not least, certainly, we've had a fantastically committed staff who absolutely know how to deliver 10 for the price of five. So if it's always been this way, if you've always had all the support, why the big fuss now? Why these changes you're proposing? Oh look, in the mid 2000s, uh, there was a growing realisation across the globe and a growing concern uh, about the state of nature. And coupled with that, consumers were starting to say to business, you've got to do much more to meet your environmental impacts. So there was a very different context that was developing. Um, and then I think um, there was another thing that was happening within DOC, and that was that the evidence was coming in that bluntly we were a failing business. We weren't failing because we were doing bad things. We were failing because we weren't doing enough good things. We just weren't achieving enough for conservation. Okay, so you saw a problem. What came out of that? I think two things became very clear out of our thinking around that. The first was we've absolutely got to do the core work that we do. We've got to keep doing that work. Um, you know, the good work that we do, largely on that third of New Zealand, it is the public conservation's land. Uh, and then we've also got to grow the conservation effort right across New Zealand and engage people. And actually, I think those two things have become very confused uh, in the restructuring that uh, we're just uh, in the process of carrying out now. Okay, so if that's confusing and people are confused, what's this restructure actually all about? Uh, well, I think you've got to see the restructuring in two very key, clear parts, the bits that I've been talking about. So the first bit is, how do we actually continue to do the work that we do? Well, we do it very well, uh, but in all honesty, we had to face the fact uh, that we weren't organised as efficiently as we could be, and that we were spending money on things that, if we made more efficient, we could put more money into that core work. So we've been very focused on how can we be a more efficient business. Towards the end of that process, we had a global financial crisis. And just like every New Zealand family and every New Zealand business, we were required to work on a lower budget. So we've lost something like $22 million from our budget of $335 million. And the challenge for us has been, how can you keep doing that work in the field on that lower budget. I'm confident that we've found ways to do that, but that's only part of what we've done. The, if we'd only had to do that, all we needed to do was take that saving, pro rata it across the organisation, uh, and there wouldn't have been any fuss. But we wouldn't have done the second bit, which is growing the business. And if you look at that global financial crisis, that meant we had to save money. We had to save money because New Zealand, like across the globe was living beyond its means, we had a financial debt. Well, actually, what we think is we've also got an environmental debt, and the second part of the restructuring was designed to address that. So it was designed to say, how can we actually do our core work, and then how can we build a part of the business that is actually going to grow the engagement of New Zealanders and business in particular, because we've been letting business off the hook for years. 
but how do we actually grow the business by getting others to engage in conservation and getting New Zealand to understand um, that we all have to do conservation across all of New Zealand. Why do we have to do that? Uh, we have to do that because actually uh, nature is at the base of the economy. The work we do is the best indicator of how healthy nature is. And when nature is healthy, we're going to have good, clean water and plenty of it. We're going to stop our topsoil, which is our economy, floating out to sea. We're going to stop doing the things that are interfering with climate regulation. And we're going to understand that if our country is going to prosper, if we're going to be in the black, we're going to have to be green. Thanks, Al. Thanks very much.